Q. Is money received under payment by mistake income subject to income tax? A. Income paid or received through mistake may be considered as income from whatever source derived, irrespective of the voluntary or involuntary action of the taxpayer in producing income. Moreover, under the claim of right doctrine, the recipient, even if he has the obligation to return the same, has a voidable title to the money received through mistake. Gutierrez v. CIR Congress enacted a law imposing 5% tax on the gross receipt of common carriers. The law does not define the term gross receipts. Express Transport, a bus company, has time deposits with ABC Bank. In 2007, Express Transport earned 1 million interest after deducting the 20% final withholding tax from its time deposits with the bank. The BIR wants to collect a 5% gross receipt tax on the interest income of Express Transport without deducting the 20% final withholding tax. Is the BIR correct? 2006. Yes. The term gross receipts is broad enough to include income constructively received by the taxpayer. The amount withheld is paid to the government on its behalf in satisfaction of withholding taxes. The fact that it did not actually receive the amount does not alter the fact that it is remitted in satisfaction of its tax obligation. Since the income withheld is an income owned by Express Transport, the same forms part of its gross receipts. CIR versus Solid Bank. Explain briefly whether the following items are taxable or non-taxable. Income from wetting. Number two, gain arising from expropriation of property. Number three, taxes paid and subsequently refunded. Four, recovery of bad debts previously charged off. Five, gain on the sale of a car used for personal purposes. 2005. Number one, taxable. Income from wedding, taxable. Gross income includes all income derived from whatever sources, Section 32, Letter A of NIRC, which was interpreted as all income not expressly excluded or exempted from the class of taxable income, irrespective of the voluntary or involuntary action of the taxpayer in producing the income. Thus, the income may proceed from a legal or illegal source such as from wetting. Unlawful gains, gambling, winnings, etc. are subject to income tax. The NIRC stands as an indifferent neutral party on the matter of whether the income comes from CIR versus Manning. Number two, gain rising from expropriation of property, taxable, sale, exchange of or other disposition of property to the government of real property is taxable. It includes taking by the government to condemnation proceedings, Gonzalez versus CTA. Number three, taxes paid and subsequently refunded, taxable. If the taxes were paid and subsequently claimed as deduction and which are subsequently refunded or credited, it shall be included as part of gross income in the year of the receipt to the extent of the income tax benefit of said deduction, NIRC Section 34, Letter C, Number 1. However, it is not taxable if the tax refunded were not originally claimed as deductions. And Number 4. Recovery of bad debts previously charged off. Taxable. Under the tax benefit rule, recovery of bad debts previously allowed as deduction in the preceding years shall be included as part of the gross income in the year of recovery to the extent of the income tax benefit of said deduction. NIRC Section 34, Letter E, Number 1. This is sometimes referred as the recapture rule. No, tax benefit rule refers to the principle that if a taxpayer recovers a loss or expense that was deducted in a previous year, the recovery must be included in the current year's gross income to the extent that it was previously deducted. And Number 5. Gain on the sale of a car used for personal purposes, taxable. Since the car is used for personal purposes, it is considered as a capital asset, hence the gain is considered income. NIRC Section 32, Letter A, Number 3, and Section 39, Letter A, Number 1. Cross income vis-a-vis -vis net income vis-a-vis -vis taxable income, net income taxation. 
Net income taxation is a system of taxation where the income subject to tax may be reduced by allowable deductions. Taxable income or net income, this refers to the pertinent items of gross income specified in the NIRC, less the deductions, and or personal and additional exemptions, if any, authorized for such types of income by the NIRC or other special laws. Distinguished gross income from net income. Basis as to deductions under gross income allows no deduction. Net income allows deduction. As to exemptions, gross income grants no exemption. Net income grants exemptions. As to tax base, gross income, net income. Advantages and disadvantages. Gross income simplifies the income tax system. Net income, confusing and complex process of filing income tax return. Substantial reduction in corruption and tax evasion as a tax exercise of discretion to allow or disallow deduction is dispensed with. Vulnerable to corruption on account of margin of discretion in the grant of deductions. More administratively feasible provides equitable relief in the form of deductions, exemptions, and tax credit. Thus away with vestige of manpower and supplies. Tax audit minimizes fraud. Q. Lao is a big time swindler. In one year, he was able to earn one million from his swindling activities. When the CIR discovered his income from swindling, the CIR assessed him a deficiency income tax for such income. The lawyer of Lao protested the assessment on the following grounds A. The income tax applies only to legal income, not to illegal income. B. Lao's receipts from his swindling did not constitute income because he was under obligation to return the amount he has swindled. Hence, his receipt from swindling was similar to a loan, which is not income because for every peso borrowed, he has a corresponding liability to pay one peso. And if he, C. If he has to pay the deficiency income tax assessment, there will be hardly anything left to return to the victims of the swindling. How will you rule on each of the three grounds for the protest? Answer to letter A. Section 32 of the NIRC includes within the purview of gross income all income from whatever source derived. Hence, the illegality of the income will not preclude the imposition of the income tax thereon. B. When a taxpayer acquires earnings, lawfully or unlawfully, without the consensual recognition expressed or implied, of an obligation to repay and without restriction as to their disposition, he has received taxable income, even though it may still be claimed that he is not entitled to retain the money, and even though he may still be adjudged to restore its equivalent to treat the embezzled funds as not taxable income would perpetuate injustice by relieving embezzlers of the duty of paying income taxes on the money they enrich themselves with by embezzlement while honest people pay their taxes on every conceivable type of income. James v. U.S. C. The deficiency income tax assessment is a direct tax imposed on the owner, which is an excise on the privilege to earn an income. It will not necessarily be paid out of the same income that he was subjected to the tax. Lao's liability to pay the tax is based on his having realized a taxable income from his swindling activities and will not affect his obligation to make restitution. Payment of the tax is a civil obligation imposed by law, while restitution is a civil liability arising from a crime. Money found may or may not be taxable if the founder knows the owner. It is not taxable because there is obligation to return. If founder does not know the owner, it is taxable, subject to special discount, or deduction when it is subsequently returned because the owner is known already. Post-dated checks are not taxable except when it is subject to discounting. The tax implication when there is exchange of services without compensation is that both parties are taxable as if both each sold their services. Self-help income is the amount saved for doing a work by the taxpayer himself instead of hiring someone to do the work. Self-help income is exempt from tax. Example, a person wants to repaint his house. Instead of hiring a painter, that person did a painting job 
himself to save money. Classification of income subject to tax. The following are income subject to tax. 1. Compensation income. 2. Fringe benefits. 3. Professional income. 4. Income from business. 5. Income from dealings in property. 6. Passive investment income. 7. Annuities, proceeds from life insurance or other types of insurance. 8. Prices in awards. 9. Pensions, retirement benefit or separation pay. 10. Income from any source whatever. This above listing is based on 2017 bar tax syllabus which is discussed in detail below. Compensation income. Compensation income includes all remuneration for services rendered by an employee for his employer unless specifically excluded under the NIRC. Fringe benefits. Fringe benefits is any good, service, or other benefits furnished or granted by an employer in cash or in kind in addition to basic salary to an individual employee except a rank and file employee, such as but not limited to housing, expense account, vehicle of any kind, household personnel such as maid, driver, and others, interest on loans at less than market rate to the extent of the difference between the market rate and the actual rate granted, membership fees, dues, and other expenses, athletic clubs, or other similar organizations, expenses for foreign travel, holiday and vacation expenses, educational assistance to the employee or his dependents, life or health insurance and other non-life insurance pr premiums or similar amounts in excess of what the law allows. NIRC Section 33, Letter B, RR 3-98, Section 233B. Professional income. Professional income refers to the fees received by a professional from the practice of his profession, provided that there is no employer-employee relationship between him and his client. The existence or non-existence of employer-employee relationship is material to determine whether the income is a compensation income or professional income. If the employer-employee relationship is present, then it is considered compensation income. Otherwise, it is a professional income. For purposes of taxation, there is no deduction allowed against compensation income, whereas allowable deductions may be made from professional income. Professional income shall be subject to creditable withholding tax rates prescribed. Income from business. Business income refers to income derived from merchandising, mining, manufacturing, and farming operations. Note, business is any activity that entails time and effort of an individual or group of individuals for purposes of livelihood or profit. Gross income derived from business. The term gross income derived from business shall be equivalent to gross sales, less sales returns, discounts and allowances, and cost of goods sold. In the case of taxpayers engaged in the sale of service, gross income means gross receipts less sales returns, allowances, and discounts. NIRC Section 27, Letter A. Cost of goods sold. It includes all business expenses directly incurred to produce the merchandise to bring them to their present location and use such as invoice cost of the goods sold for a trading concern or cost of production for a manufacturing concern. Cost of services. All direct costs and expenses necessarily incurred to provide the service required by the customers and clients, including 1. Salaries and employee benefits of personal, consultants, specialists directly rendering the service, and number 2. Cost of facilities directly utilized in providing that service, Section 27, Letter E, NIRC. Income from dealings in property. Types of properties from which income may be derived. 1. Ordinary assets refer to properties held by the taxpayer use in connection with his trade or business, which includes the following. a. Stock in trade of the taxpayer or other property of a kind which would properly be included in the inventory of the taxpayer if on hand at the close 
of the taxpayer's year. B. Property held by the taxpayer primarily for sale to customers in the ordinary course of trade or business. C. Property used in the trade or business of a character which is subject to the allowance for depreciation provided in the NIRC. Letter D. Real property used in trade or business of the taxpayer. Examples of ordinary assets. A. The condominium building owned by a realty company, the units of which are for rent or for sale. B. Machinery and equipment of a manufacturing concern subject to depreciation. Letter C. The motor vehicles of a person engaged in transportation business. Capital assets include property held by the taxpayer whether or not connected with his trade or business other than the SOUR above. SOUR above, which is the stock, ordinary, used, and real. Examples of capital assets, jewelry not used for trade or business. B. Residential houses and lands owned and used as such. Letter C. Automobiles not used in trade or business. Letter D. Stock and securities held by taxpayers other than dealers in securities. Construction and interpretation of capital assets. The general rule has been laid down that the total definition of a capital asset must be narrowly construed while the exclusions from such definitions must be interpreted broadly. Tuasen versus Lingat. Q. Distinguish capital asset from ordinary asset. 2003. Capital assets include property held by the taxpayer, whether or not connected with his trade or business, but the term does not include any of the following which are consequently considered ordinary assets. Stock in trade of the taxpayer or other property of a kind which would properly be included in the inventory of the taxpayer if on hand at the close of the taxable year. Property held by the taxpayer primarily for sale to customers in the ordinary course of trade or business. Property used in the trade or business of a character which is subject to the allowance of depreciation provided in Section 34 of the NIRC or real property used in trade or business of the taxpayer. Guidelines in determining whether a real property is a capital asset or ordinary asset. Real estate dealer. All real properties acquired are ordinary assets. Real estate developer. All real properties which are acquired, whether developed or undeveloped, held by the real estate developer primarily for sale or for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business, or which would be included in the inventory of the taxpayer if on hand at the close of the taxable year, and used in a trade or business whether in the form of land, building, or improvements shall be considered as ordinary asset. Real estate lesser. All real properties, whether land and or other improvements, which are for lease or rent, or being offered for lease or rent, or for use, being used in the trade or business, shall be considered as ordinary assets. Taxpayers habitually, enga habitually engaged in the real estate business. All real properties acquired in the course of trade or business shall be considered as ordinary asset. Taxpayers not engaged in the real estate business. Real properties, whether land, building, or other improvements, which are used or being used or have been previously used in the trade or business shall be considered as ordinary asset. Taxpayer changing business from real estate to non-real estate business. It will not result in the reclassification of real property from ordinary to capital asset. Taxpayers original registered to be engaged in the real estate business but failed to subsequently operate. All real properties originally acquired by it shall, be con shall continue to be treated as ordinary assets. Abandoned and idle real property, it shall continue to be treated as ordinary assets. Real property subject of involuntary transfer including expropriation or foreclosure sale. No effect on the classification of the property in the hands of the involuntary seller. Significance in determining whether the capital asset is ordinary asset or capital asset. They are subject to different rules. There are special rules that apply only to capital transactions to it. Holding period rule. Capital loss limitation. And number three, 
net capital loss carryover, NELCO. Q. State with reason the tax treatment of the following in the preparation of annual income tax returns income realized from sale of A. Capital assets and B. Ordinary assets. Letter A. Capital assets, generally income realized from the sale of capital assets, are not reported in the income tax return as they are already subject to final taxes. Capital gains tax on real property and sale shares of stock not traded in the stock exchange. What are to be reported in the annual income tax return are the capital gains derived from the disposition of capital assets other than real property or shares of stocks in domestic corporation which are not subject to final tax. Letter B. Income realized from sale of ordinary assets is part of gross income included in the income tax return. May capital asset be reclassified as ordinary asset? Yes. Property initially classified as capital asset may thereafter be treated as an ordinary asset if a combination of the factors indubitably tend to show that the activity was in furtherance of or in the course of the taxpayer's trade or business. Q. In January 1970, one bought one hectare of agricultural land in Laguna for 100000 This property has a current fair market value of 10 million in view of the construction of a concrete road traversing the property. Juan agreed to exchange his agricultural lot in Laguna for a one-half hectare residential property located in Batangas with a fair market value of 10 million. Owned by Alpha Corporation, a domestic corporation engaged in the purchase and sale of real property, Alpha Corporation acquired the property in 2007 for 9 million. What is the nature of the real property exchange for tax purposes? Capital or ordinary asset? Answer. The one hectare agricultural land owned by Juan is a capital asset because it is not a real property used in trade or business. The one half hectare residential property owned by Alpha Corporation is an ordinary asset because the owner is engaged in the purchase and sale of real property. Section 39 of NARC. Computation of the amount of gain or loss. Gains derived from dealings in property means all income derived from the disposition of property, whether real, personal, or mixed, for 1. Money in case of sale. 2. Property in case of exchange. 3. Combination of both sales and exchange with results in gain. Note, gain is the difference between the proceeds of the sale or exchange and the acquisition value of the property disposed by the taxpayer. Ordinary income versus ordinary loss. Ordinary income, it includes the gain derived from the sale or exchange of ordinary asset. Ordinary loss, the loss that may be sustained from the sale or exchange of ordinary asset. Capital gain versus capital loss. Capital gain, it includes the gain derived from the sale or exchange of an asset not connected with a trade or business. Capital loss. The loss that may be sustained from the sale or exchange of an asset not connected with the trade or business. Capital loss may not exceed capital gains when used as a deduction to income. Ordinary gain versus capital gain. Ordinary gain, a gain derived from the sale or exchange of ordinary assets, such as SOAR. Capital gain, a gain derived from the sale or exchange of capital assets or property whether or not connected with a trade or business of the taxpayer other than SOAR. Actual gain versus presumed gain. Actual gain, excess of the selling price over the cost of the asset. Presumed gain, the law presumes that the seller of real property classified as capital asset realized gains which is taxed as 6% of the selling price of fair market value, whichever is higher. Difference between treatment of capital gains and losses between individuals and corporations. Basis, availability of holding period, individual, holding period available, corporation, no holding period. Extent of recognition or taxability, individual, the percentages of gain or loss to be taken into account shall be the following. 
100% if the capital assets have been held for 12 months or less, and 50% if the capital asset has been held for more than 12 months. Under corporation, capital gains and losses are taxable to the extent of 100%. Deductibility of capital loss. Individual, non-deductibility of net capital loss. Capital losses are allowed. Under corporation, non-deductibility of net capitals. Exception, if any domestic bank or trust company a substantial part of whose business is the receipt of deposits, sells any bond, the venture, note, or certificate of other evidence of indebtedness issued by any corporation, including one issued by one government or political subdivision. Under individual, non-deductibility of net capital losses, capital losses are allowed only to the extent of the capital gains, hence the net capital loss is not deductible. Capital gains subject to final tax or capital gains reported in the income tax return. Basis as to deductions. There is a fixed rate for the tax subject to final tax reported in the ITR. The capital gains are aggregated with other income to constitute gross income subject to deductions. As to actual gains, general rule, it does not matter whether or not capital gains are actually earned presumed gains. Exception, disposition of shares not traded in the stock exchange or through initial public offering reported in the ITR, there must be actual capital gains earned. As to holding period, general rule holding period is immaterial. Exception, Disposition of shares not traded in the stock exchange or through initial public offering reported in the ITR holding period is considered. As to net loss, carry over, not allowed. For subject to final tax, not allowed. Reported in the ITR could be availed. Holding period rule, long-term capital gain vis-a-vis -vis short-term capital gain. Where the taxpayer held the capital asset sold for more than 12 months, the gain derived therefrom is taxable only to the extent of 50%. Consequently, if the taxpayer held the capital asset sold for a year or less, the whole gain shall be taxable. The same also applies to capital loss. It is a form of tax avoidance since the taxpayer can exploit it in order to reduce his tax due. Note, holding period does not find application in the case of disposition of 1. Shares of stock and 2. Real property considered as capital asset, whether the seller is an individual trust estate or a private corporation. Only individual taxpayers can avail of the holding period rule. It is not allowed to corporations. Net capital gain and net capital loss. Net capital gain is the excess of gains from sales or exchange of capital assets over the losses from which such sales or exchanges. Net capital loss is the excess of the losses from sales or exchanges of capital assets over the gains from such sales or exchanges. Recognition of gain or loss in exchange of property. General rule, upon the sale or exchange of property, the entire amount of the gain or loss shall be recognized. Exception. Instances where no gain or loss is recognized. 1. A corporation which is a party to a merger or consolidation exchanges property solely for stock in a corporation which is a party to the merger or consolidation. Number 2. A shareholder exchanges stock in a corporation which is a party to the merger or consolidation solely for the stock of another corporation, also a party to the merger or consolidation. 3. A security holder of a corporation which is party to the merger of consolidation exchanges his securities in such corporation solely for stock securities in another corporation, party to the merger or consolidation, or in number 4. If the property is transferred to a corporation by a person in exchange for a stock or unit of participation in such a corporation, as a result of such exchange, said person gains control of said corporation, 
provided that stocks issued for services shall not be considered as issued in return for property. No gain, no loss shall be recognized, means that if there is a gain, it shall not be subject to tax. If there is a loss, it shall not be allowed as a deduction. Q. When is gain or loss not recognized in cases of transfer of shares of stock of corporation in exchange of property? Answer. A re the requisites for the non-recognition of gains or loss are as follows. A. The transferee is a corporation. B. The transferee exchanges its shares of stock for property or properties of the transferor. C. The transfer is made by a person acting alone or together with others not exceeding four person. And D. As a result of the exchange, the transfer alone or together with others not exceeding four gains control of the transferee. CIR versus fill in fast. Merger or consolidation of, for purpose of taxation. Merger or consolidation means ordinary merger or consolidation or number two, the acquisition by one corporation of all or substantially all the properties of another corporation solely for stock provided that a merger or consolidation must be undertaken for a bona fide business purpose and not solely for the purpose of escaping the burden of taxation. B. In determining whether a bona fide business purpose exists, each and every step of the transaction shall be considered and the whole transaction or series of transactions shall be treated as a single unit. In determining whether the property transferred constitute a substantial portion of the property of the transferor, the term property shall be taken to include the cash assets of the transfer. Capital loss limitation rule. Losses from sale or exchanges of capital assets shall be allowed only to the extent of gains from such sales or exchanges. Thus, under this capital loss limitation rule, capital loss is deductible only to the extent of capital gain. The taxpayer can only deduct capital loss from capital gain. If there is no capital gain, there is no deduction is allowed because you cannot deduct capital loss from ordinary gain. Rationale, to allow the deduction of non-business capital losses from business, ordinary income or gain could mean the reduction or even elimination of taxable income of the taxpayer through personal, non-business related expense, resulting in substantial losses of revenue to the government. Mama Lateo, 2014. Where the capital loss limitation rule will not apply. If a bank or trust company incorporated under the laws of the Philippines, a substantial part of whose business is the receipt of deposits, sales any bond, debenture, note or certificate of other evidence of indebtedness issued by any corporation with interest coupons or in registered form. Any losses resulting from such sale shall not be subject to the above limitations and shall not be included in determining the applicability of such limitation to other losses. Q. Can you deduct ordinary loss from ordinary gain and from capital gain? Yes, for both cases. Rule on matching cost. Under this rule, only ordinary and necessary expense are deductible from gross income or ordinary income. Capital loss is a non-business connected expense as it can be sustained only from capital transactions. To allow the capital loss as a deduction from ordinary income would run counter to the rule on matching costs against revenue. Net loss carryover. NELCO. Net loss carryover. If any taxpayer other than a corporation sustains in any taxable year a net capital loss, such loss in an amount not in excess of the net income for such year shall be treated in the succeeding taxable year as a loss from the sale or exchange of a capital asset held for not more than 12 months. Rules with regard to NELCO. Net loss carryover is allowed only to individuals, including estates and trusts. The net loss carryover shall not exceed the net income for the year sustained and is deductible only for the succeeding year. 
The capital assets must not be real property or stocks listed and traded in the stock exchange. Capital asset must be held for not more than 12 months. Nelco versus net operating loss carryover. Net loss carryover versus net operating loss carryover, NOLCO. Basis as to source under NELCO arises from capital transactions, meaning involving capital assets. NOLCO arises from ordinary transactions, meaning involving ordinary assets. As to who can avail, can be availed of by individual taxpayer only under NELCO. Under NOLCO can be availed of by individual and corporate taxpayer. As to period of carryover, may be carried over only in the next succeeding taxable year under NELCO. Under NOLCO allows carryover of operating loss in three succeeding taxable years or in case of mining companies five years. Tax treatment of capital gains and losses. Number one, from sale of stocks of corporations. A. Stocks traded in the stock exchange subject to stock transaction tax of one half of one percent on its gross selling price. B. Stocks not traded in the stock exchange subject to capital gains tax. From sale of real properties, land, and or building in the Philippines, capital gain derived in, is subject to capital gains tax but no loss is recognized because gain is presumed. Note, in the NIRC speaks of real property with respect to individual taxpayers, estate and trust, but only speaks of land and or building with respect to domestic corporations. Gains from sale to the government of real property classified as capital asset. The taxpayer has the option to either, one, include a part of gross income subject allowable deductions and personal exemptions, then subject to the scheduler tax or, note, this is not available to a corporate taxpayer. Letter B, subject to final tax of 6% on capital gains, section 24. Number three, from sale of other capital assets. The rules on capital gains and losses apply in the determination of the amount to be included in gross income subject to the graduated rates of 5 to 32 percent for individuals and the normal corporate income tax of 30 percent for corporations and not subject to capital gains tax. Capital gains from sale of shares of stock not traded in the stock exchange. The holding period notwithstanding a final tax of the rate prescribed below is hereby imposed upon the net capital gains realized during the taxable year from the sale barter or exchange or other disposition of shares of stock in a domestic corporation which are not traded in the stock exchange, not over 100,000, 5%, on any amount in excess of 100,000, 10%. Note, what is controlling is whether or not the shares of stock are traded in the local stock exchange and not where the actual sales happen. Del Rosario versus CIR. Persons liable to pay capital gains tax on the sale of shares of stock not traded in the stock exchange. Number one, individuals, both citizens and aliens. Number two, corporations, both domestic and foreign. Three, states and trusts. Rules in determining the selling price of the shares disposed. Number one, in case of cash sale, the selling price is the total consideration as indicated in the deed of sale. Number two, if the consideration is partly in money and partly in kind, the selling price is the cash or money received plus the fair market value of the property received. 3. In case of exchange, the selling price is the fair market value, FV, FMV, or the property received. Number 4. If the FMV of the shares of stock disposed is higher than the amount, and or fair market value of the property received, the excess of the FMV of the shares of stock disposed over the amount of money, and the FMV on the property shall be deemed a gift subject to the donor's tax. 
5. In the case of shares of stock not listed and traded in the local stock exchanges, the value of the shares of stock at the time of sale shall be the fair market value. In determining the value of the shares, the adjusted net asset method shall be used whereby all assets and liabilities are adjusted to fair market value. The net of adjusted asset minus the liability values is the indicated value of the gilt equity. 6. The appraised value of the real property shall be the highest of the three. A. Fair market value determined by the commissioner. B. Fair market value as shown in the schedule of values fixed by provincial and city assessors or fair market value as determined by independent appraiser. Note, the basis of determining the capital gains tax or CGT is the capital gain and not the fair market value. The above rules apply to DC, RFC, and NRFC, non-resident foreign corporation, resident foreign corporation. Important features as regards capital gains from sale of shares of stock. 1. No capital loss carry over for capital losses sustained during the year not listed and traded in a local stock exchange shall be allowed, but capital losses may be deducted on the same taxable year only. Number two, the entire amount of capital gains and capital loss not listed and traded in the local stock exchange shall be considered without taking into account the holding period respective of the type or kind of taxpayer. Number three, Non-deductibility of losses on wash sales and short sales. 4. Gain from sale of shares of stock in a foreign corporation are not subject to capital gains tax, but to graduated rates either as capital gain or ordinary income depending on the nature of the trade of business of the taxpayer. Short sale. A short sale is any sale of a security which the seller does not own or any sale which is consummated by the delivery of a security borrowed by or for the account of the seller. Ownership of a security. A person shall be deemed the owner of a security if he, one, or his agent has title to it, two, has purchased or entered into an unconditional contract binding on both parties thereto to purchase it and has not yet received it. 3. Owns a security convertible into or exchangeable for it and has tendered such security for conversion or exchange. 4. Has an option to purchase or acquire it and has exercised such option and 5. Has right or warrant to subscribe to it and has exercised such rights or warrants provided, however, that a person shall be deemed to own securities only to the extent he has a net long position in such securities. Q. As to tax implication, distinguished shares of stocks not listed and traded through stock exchange from those listed and traded through stock exchange. 2011. Answer. As to nature, not listed and traded, income. Listed and traded, business. As to kind of tax, not listed and traded, capital gains tax, listed and traded, percentage tax. As to rate, not listed and traded, not over 100,000, 5%, in excess to 100,000, 10%, listed and traded, one half of 1%. As to tax base, not listed and traded, net capital gain, listed and traded, gross selling price, Q. What is the effect if the sale is made by a dealer in securities? Answer. The shares of stock, whether listed and traded in the local stock exchange, listed but not traded in the local stock exchange, or not listed, shall be treated as ordinary assets, and the ordinary gain, if any, from the sale or transfer thereof, shall be subject to the graduated income tax rate in the case of an individual seller or to the normal corporate income tax, in the case of corporate seller. Q. 
John, U.S. citizen residing in McCuddy, bought shares of stock in a domestic corporation whose shares are listed and traded in the Philippine Stock Exchange at the price of $2 million. A day after, he sold the shares of stock to his favorite McCuddy stock broker at a gain of 200000 A. Is John subject to Philippine income tax on the sale of his shares through his stock broker? Is he liable for any other tax? B. If John directly sold the shares to his best friend, a U.S. citizen residing in Makati, at a gain of 200000 is he liable for Philippine income tax? If so, what is the tax base and rate? Answer to letter A. No, the gain on the sale or disposition of shares of stock of a domestic corporation held as capital asset will not be subjected to income tax if these shares sold are listed and traded in the stock exchange. However, the seller is subject to the percentage tax of one percent of one half of one percent of the gross selling price. Section one twenty seven NIRC letter A. Answer to letter B. Yes, the sale of shares of stock to a domestic corporation held as capital, not to a trading in the local stock exchange, is subject to capital gains tax based on the net capital gain during the taxable year. The tax rate is 5% for the net capital gain, not exceeding 100000 and 10% for any excess. The tax would be 15000 Federico, a Filipino citizen, migrated to the United States some six years ago and got a permanent resident status or green card. Should he pay his Philippine income tax on the gains he derived from the sale in the New York Stock Exchange or shares of stock in PLDT, a Philippine corporation, 2011? Yes, the gain from the sale of shares of stock in a domestic corporation shall be treated as derived entirely from sources within the Philippines regardless of where the said shares are sold. Section 42 in IRC. Capital gains realized from the sale of real property, land, and or building. Treatment of sale or disposition of real property located in the Philippines treated as capital asset. A final tax of 6% shall be imposed based on the higher amount between 1. The gross selling price or 2 whichever is higher between the current fair market value as determined by a zonal va value prescribed zonal value of real properties as determined by the cir or b assessed value the fair market value as shown in the schedule of values of the provincial and city assets force section 24 and irc actual gain or loss is immaterial since there is a conclusive presumption of gain as regards transactions affected by the 6% capital gain tax, the NIRC speaks of real property with respect to individual taxpayers, state and trust, but only speaks of land and or building with respect to domestic corporations. Note, the above discussion of CGT on sale or disposition of real properties shall apply only to domestic corporations since foreign corporations, RFC, and NRFC cannot own properties in the Philippines. Tax treatment if property is not located in the Philippines. Gains realized from the sale, exchange, or other disposition of real property not located in the Philippines by resident citizens or domestic corporations shall be subject to ordinary income taxation, but subject to foreign tax credit. Such income may be exempt in case of non-resident citizens, alien individuals and foreign corporations transactions covered by the presumed capital gains tax on real property it covers sale exchange or other disposition including pacta de retro and other forms of conditional sale note sale exchange or other disposition includes taking by the government through expropriation proceedings q Hopeful Corporation obtained a loan from Generous Bank and executed a mortgage on its real property to secure the loan. When Hopeful Corporation failed to pay the loan, Generous Bank extrajudicially foreclosed the mortgage on the property and acquired the same as the highest bidder. A month after the foreclosure, Hopeful Corporation exercised its rights of redemption 
and was able to redeem the property. Is Generous Bank liable to pay capital gains tax as a result of the foreclosure sale? Explain 2014. No. In a foreclosure of real estate mortgage, the capital gains tax accrues only after the lapse of the redemption period because it is only then that there exists a transfer of property. Thus, if the right to redeem the foreclosed property was exercised by the mortgager before the expiration of the redemption period, as in this case, the foreclosure is not taxable event. Manol Manalo, Filipino citizen residing in Makati City, owns a vacation house and lot in Tagaytay, which he acquired in 2000 for 15 million. On January 10, 2013, he sold said real property to Mayaman, another Filipino residing in Quezon City, for 20 million. On February 2013, Manalo filed a capital gains return and paid 1.2 million, representing 6% of capital gains tax. Since Manalo did not derive any ordinary income, no income tax return was filed by him for 2013. After the tax audit conducted in 2014, the BIR officer assessed Manalo for deficiency income tax computed as follows 5 million, 20 million less 15 times 30 percent, that's 1.5 million. Without the capital gains tax paid being allowed as tax credit, Manalo consulted a real estate broker who said that the 1.2 million capital gains tax should be credited from the 1.5 million deficiency income tax. Is the BIR officer tax assessment correct? Explain. If you were hired by Manalo as his tax consultant, what advice would you give him to protect his interests? 2008. Answer. No. The BIR officer's tax assessment is wrong for two reasons. First, the rate of income tax use is the corporate income tax, although the taxpayer is, in, is an individual. Second, the computation of the gain recognized from the sale did not consider the holding period of the asset, the capital asset having been for more than 12 months, only 50% of the gain is recognized. B. I will advise him to ask for the issuance of the final assessment notice and request for the crediting of the capital gains tax paid against the income tax due. The taxpayer should explain that the capital gains tax was paid in good faith because the property sold is a capital asset and considering that what was paid is also an income tax, it should be credited against the income tax assessment on the ground of equity. Once the final assessment is made, I will advise him to protest within 30 days from receipt, invoking the holding period and the wrong tax rate used. Q. A corporation engaged in a real estate development executed deeds of sale on various subdivided lots. One buyer, after going around the subdivision, bought a corner lot with a good view of the surrounding terrain. He paid $1.2 million, and the title to the property was issued. A year later, the value of the lot appreciated to a market value of $1.6 million, and the buyer decided to build his house thereon. Upon inspection, however, he discovered that a huge tower antenna had been erected on the land frontage totally blocking his view. When he complained, the realty company exchanged his lot with another corner lot with an equal area but affording a better view. Is the buyer liable for capital gains tax on the exchange of the lot? Answer is yes. The buyer is subject to capital gains tax on the exchange of lots on the basis of prevailing fair market value of the property transferred at the time of the exchange or the fair market value of the property received, whichever is higher. Real property transactions subject to capital gains tax are not limited to sales, but also exchanges of property unless exempted by a specific provision of law. A. A doctor by profession sold in the year 2000 a parcel of land which he bought as a form of investment in 1990 for one million. The land was sold to be his colleague and at the time when the real estate price had gone down for only 800000 which was then the fair market value of the land. He used the proceeds to finance his trip to the United States. He claims that he should not be made to pay the 6% final tax value he did not have any actual gain on the sale. Is his contention correct? 
2001. No, the 6% capital gains tax on the sale of a real property held as capital asset is imposed on the income presumed to have been realized from the sale, which is the fair market value, or selling price thereof, whichever is higher. Actual gain is not required for the imposition of the tax, but it is the gain by fiction of law which is taxable. In January 1970, Juan bought one hectare of agricultural land in Laguna for 100000 This property has a current fair market value of $10 million. In view of the construction of a concrete road traversing the property, Juan agreed to exchange his agricultural lot in Laguna for a one-half hectare residential property located in Batangas, which have, with a fair market value of $10 million, owned by Alpha Corporation a domestic corporation engaged in the purchase and sale of real property. Alpha Corporation acquired the property in 2007 for $9 million. What is the nature of real properties exchange for tax purposes? Capital asset or ordinary asset? Explain. The one hectare agricultural land owned by Juan Gonzalez is a capital asset because it is not a real property used in trade or in business. The one-half hectare residential property owned by Alpha Corporation is an ordinary asset because the owner is engaged in the purchase and sale of real property. Larry B. Is Juan Gonzalez subject to income tax on the exchange property? If so, what is the tax base and rate? Explain. Yes, the tax base is a taxable disposition of a real property classified as a capital asset is the higher between two values the fair market value of the property received in exchange and the fair market value of the property exchange. Since the fair market value of these two properties is the same, the said fair market value should be taken as the tax base, which is 10 million. The income tax rate is 6%. Letter C. Is Alpha Corporation subject to income tax on the exchange of property? If so, what is the tax base and rate? Yes, the gain from the exchange constitutes an item of gross income, and being a business income, it must be reported in the annual income tax of, of Alpha. From the pertinent items of gross income deductions allowed by law from gross income can be claimed to arrive at the net income, which is the tax base for the corporate income tax of 30%. Sale of Principal Residence Principal residence refers to the dwelling house, including the land on which it is situated, where the individual and members of his family reside, and whenever absent, the said individual intends to return. Actual occupancy is not considered interrupted or abandoned by reason of temporary absence due to travel or studies or work abroad, or such other similar circumstance. Note, the address shown in the ITR is conclusively presumed as the principal residence. If the taxpayer is not required to file a return, certification from barangay chairman or building administrator for condominium shall suffice. Sale of principal residence by an individual. A sale of principal residence by an individual is exempt from capital t gains tax, provided the following requisites are present sale or disposition of the old actual principal residence, two, by a citizen or a resident alien, three, proceeds from which is fully utilized in acquiring or constructing a new principal residence within 18 calendar months from the date of sale or disposition, four, notify the CIR within 30 days from the date of sale or disposition to a prescribed return of his intention to avail the tax exemption, five, can be availed of once every 10 years. 6. The historical cost or adjusted basis of his old principal residence shall be carried over to the cost basis of his new principal residence. 7. If there is no full utilization, the portion of the gains presumed to have been realized shall be subject to capital gains tax. And number 8. The 6% capital gains tax due shall be deposited with an authorized agent bank subject to release upon certification of the RDO that the proceeds of the sale have been utilized. Hugh, Mr. H decided to sell the house and lot wherein he and his family have lived for the past 10 years, hoping to buy and move to a new house and lot closer to his children's school, 
Concerned about the capital gains tax that will be due on the sale of his house, Mr. H approaches you as a friend for advice if it is possible for the sale of their house to be exempted from capital gains tax and the conditions they must comply with to avail themselves of said exemption. How will you respond? 2015. Answer. Mr. H may avail the exemption from capital gains tax on sale of principal residence by natural persons under the law. The following are the requisites. 1. Proceeds of the sale of the principal residence have been fully utilized in acquiring or constructing new principal residence within 18 calendar months from the date of sale or disposition. 2. The historical cost or adjusted basis of the real property sold or disposed will be carried over to the new principal residence built or acquired. 3. The commissioner has been duly notified to a prescribed return within 30 days from the date of sale or disposition of the person's intention to avail of the tax exemption. And 4. Exemption was availed only once every 10 years. If the taxpayer constructed a new residence and then sold his old house, is the transaction subject to capital gains tax? Yes. Exemption from capital gains tax does not find application since the law is clear that the proceeds should be used in acquiring or constructing a new principal residence. Thus, the old residence should first be sold before acquiring or constructing the new residence. Passive Investment Income Passive in income refers to income derived from any activity in which the taxpayer has no active participation or involvement. Summary rules on the tax treatment of certain passive income as applied to individuals. Okay, but before that, classification of passive income. Passive income may either be subject to scheduler rates or subject to final tax. Q. What is meant by income subject to final tax? Income subject to final tax refers to an income wherein the tax due is fully collected through the withholding tax system. Under this procedure, the payer of the income withholds the tax and remits it to the government as a final settlement of the income tax due on said income. The recipient is no longer required to include the items of income subjected to final tax as part of his gross income in his income tax return. Okay. Summary rules on the tax treatment of certain passive income as applied to individuals. Source of income. Within and without. Resident citizen within and without. Non-resident citizen within only. Resident alien within. Non-resident alien engaged in trade and business within. Non-resident alien not engaged in trade and business within. Interest. On interest and currency bank deposit yield or other monetary benefits from deposits substitute trust funds, and similar arrangement. Exception. If the depositor has an employee trust fund or accredited retirement plan, such interest income, yield, or other monetary benefit is exempt from final withholding tax. RC, 20%. NRC, 20%. RA, 20%. NRA, ETB, 20%. NRA, in ETB, 25%. Interest income under the expanded foreign currency deposit system. Note, if the loan is granted by a foreign government or an international or regional financing institution established by governments, the interest income of the lender shall not be subject to the final withholding tax. Resident citizen, 7.5%. Non-resident citizen, exempt. Resident alien, 7.5. Non-resident alien engaged in trade and business exam. NRE, NRA, and ETB exam. Interest income from long-term deposits or investment in the form of savings, common or individual trust fund deposit substitutes, investment management accounts, and other investments evidenced by certificates in such form prescribed by the BSP. Held for five years or more, exempt from taxation. Four years or less than five years, 5%. Three years to less than four years, 12%. Less than 
less than 3 years, 20%. But for the non-resident alien not doing not engaged in trade and business 25 percent that's really confusing dividend dividend from a DC or from a joint stock company insurance or mutual fund company in regional operating headquarters of a multinational company or on the share of an individual in the distributable net income after tax of partnership except that of GPP official he is a partner or on the share of an individual in the net income after tax of an association a joint account or joint venture or consortium taxable as a corporation of which he is a member of co venture 10% for RC and RC 10% are a 10% 20% for NRA, ETB, and 25% for NRA and ETB.